card for this thing, but I haven't went and picked it up yet. From the post office, it's in. What's up YouTube? So today we are going to replace the carb on this Husky 455 Rancher. It's not idling, very hard to start when it's warm. And uh, I took the carb apart and it needs a rebuild kit so I'm just going to replace the whole carb because I I'm going to rebuild this carb but I, I just ordered the whole carb for now because some of those jets were not coming out for me and I didn't want to mess around with it right now. I want my chainsaw. So I just bought the whole carb and I made sure to buy the actual one that Husqvarna supplies, not the cheap uh, Chinese one. This is the actual Walboro, Walbro carburetor that Husky uh, supplies with this chainsaw. So that is what we're going with today. So to start off with, we can remove the cover first this top cover it's just three screws here And then we'll just set this aside. And now we're going to take off the handle. Well, first we'll remove this air filter. It just clips on here and then it pops off. Okay. Okay, and now, I hope you guys can see there good. We are going to remove the handle. And this handle is connected to the carburetor right here. This thing here, this plastic piece, locks over it. So you just got to lift this up. And this is the, for the throttle. The throttle clips right on here. And so you, on the carb, you want to flip that up. So you can undo that throttle cable when you undo the handle. So you can separate it from the chainsaw completely. I will show you here in a second. So this handle's on with some... Uh, Allen key bolts here. They're 532. As soon as I get this handle off, I'll put the chainsaw in the vise here. So the first one I removed is right above the gas tank. There's one there. And now Right on the chain guard here, there's one right here. 
This one's kind of dirty. Might need a pick or something to clean that out. And then there's one on the handle right here. I want to remove that other one first. So let me see if I have something that will clean that out. If I remember correctly, there's only three bolts holding this handle on. Okay, and now the last one's up top here. And there's no reason to separate this whole throttle handle, because you can. You don't need to. It gives you no advantage. Okay, so now we can remove this handle. Let's get this bolt out. Okay, and so to do this, you are going to want to flick this blue thing up, like I said, showed you earlier. And to unclip this, you just slide it over to the right, and it's kind of locked in place, and then it'll go up. And then you can unhook the throttle cable, and then you can pull this whole handle off. Now if I remember correctly, it's kind of funky to get this off. It's literally just resting in the handle. It's not clipped on anything or nothing like that. So don't don't worry about that. So the key is to try and keep it straight as possible. And there we go. It came out. This rubber just slides in the grooves there. You'll see it. So now this handle will come right off. Okay, so now we have the handle completely off. Now I'm going to put this in the vise. You probably, you probably could do it before you take the handle off. I just couldn't remember if I went which way I took that off, back or the front. Okay, so now let's see if you guys can see here. Okay, so now you got your uh, on off switch and your choke. You have to remove that. And then there's two Allen key screws the same size that holds the handle on holding this uh, carb on. So you can undo those. See, really simple to do. And there's the longer ones. This one didn't want to come out. Let's grab some needle nose and we'll pull that guy out. There she comes. Okay, so now the carb is completely loose. Can't remember if we took that off or not. So another thing that's holding it on is uh, there's a cover over your uh, adjustments on your carb on the high and low. 
And now we just got to take off this here. It just it's clipped on. So this part pull there's a little tab here. Pull that tab and slide it over. And then same thing with the electrical So dirty here, I gotta see what's holding this one on. I'm just going to undo this side cover a bit, see if this helps free up some room. I don't think it does. I'm just I'm going to take off this whole rewind here. take the rewind off. For some reason I thought that would help. Okay, so now we got your gas lines. There's one right to the top left here. So just pry it off. Then there's one at the bottom here. Pry that guy off. Oh my god, I'm missing two bolts. Sorry, I don't even think you have to just take out those black tubes. Okay, so now we, there's two bolts here I missed. Forgot about these ones. For some reason I was thinking there's only two bolts holding on this carb. That's why she wasn't coming. Now she'll come. This will separate it from the gasket there. These ones are a bit shorter. So the long ones go on the bottom. And she is free. There, this whole front piece comes off the carb. Put that to the side. And now the carb comes right off. And now, I think we have to transfer the choke onto the new carb. Yes, we certainly do. So it's just squeezed on, on there. You just got to uh, get some pliers and squeeze that free. I think you can also unscrew it off there if you wanted to. I just uh, unscrewed it off for now. I'm going to see if I can snap this off easier with it off. Looks like you can. Well, she is on there good. We got her off. So now we transfer it to the new one. So you got the choke symbol. So you want that up, facing up. I'm just going to quickly uh, spray this off.
just snaps back into place there like nothing. Okay, so now you got that bottom gas line. So you probably want to hook that up first. So you grab some small needle nose pliers. Something's caught here. Okay, and get her all the way on there. Now this top one easily slides on. Make sure she's nice and clean. If your chainsaw is really dirty here too, I would blow it off before installing the new carb. I just had this apart, so I didn't really do it. I should have again, though. And now uh, slide that rubber gasket over your adjustments. Now grab the plastic housing here. spray this guy off. There's two rubber pieces here on the sides that uh, these clip into. So you gotta do that and then your starter switch and uh, your choke cable. I like to put this on first because it's kind of a pain in the butt. Make sure it functions. It's all snapped on there. And now we get this thing on the grooves. You want the choke to fit in there with that switch, so. Now this is kind of a crappy part too. It's all pretty tight in here. Slide it over with the screwdriver. Squish it in there. Okay, so now you can unclip to have your uh, throttle cable ready. And now we can put our screws back in. Something seems funky here. Good time to check all your hoses, your fuel lines. And now we have to see if this thing will idle again.
I'm just checking something so it snaps back that way. So this was right. And then it just snaps over top like that. Okay, so now our throttle. Where'd we put that? This thing is even more of a pain to put on. I think it should go up like that. Okay, so that's right, right like that. Push her all the way in. And let's grab the handle. Clean it off. I don't want to start the air compressor because everyone's sleeping. And just slide her in there. There she goes. And she's locked in on the carb. But now we can uh, screw this on there. Get her lined up. There we go. Now you put the guard on, we're going to take it out of the vise. So you want to make sure the bottom's lined up there. Okay, and now we'll put the air filter back on. Should we put the top cover on or starter? I'm gonna put her on. Good luck. Okay, so now uh, let's try and start her. It's going to move the camera. Okay, let's try and start this thing. We'll prime it. I don't know if it'll need 
some chill. So hard to start when it was warmed up, so we'll have to test that out. But it wouldn't even idle after even when you first started up. Like when it was cold like that, it, from a cold start, it wouldn't idle. Other than the high idle there, once you kick that down, it, it wouldn't idle on its own. So it's already idling on its own. I think replacing the carb like that was way easier than rebuilding it. it took way less time. Literally just swap it out instead of having to take it apart, clean it take all those jets apart, reset everything, and then put it all back together and find out it still doesn't run very good, and then you gotta adjust it all, or even try and clean it again. That's just me, because I'm not the best with carbs, don't have much experience with them. I've cleaned a few, had good results, and I've had bad results. So I just thought this would be easier, wasn't much more expensive, and now it's running awesome. I'm glad I did that, and now I can take that carb apart and uh, rebuild it too. So now I have a spare. So if that ever happens again, I just throw in the spare carb and then I'm off cutting again. So no messing around with clean carbs. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Uh, soon we'll be trying to take the, I got a flat tractor tire out there, that big Minneapolis Moline M670 Super Diesel. We're going to try and break the bead on it with this backhoe. Cause I don't have anything to break the bead. Got a new tube for it already. And then we got a fuel pump to change on that Tiburon outside. I got that already too. And then we got to put that plow on the truck. We just got some more snow. I'll, I'll just use the Massey here for now to plow snow, but I'd like to use the truck. I'm mean, going to probably use both. So if that interests you guys, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. And if this helped you all, please give that button a like. Comment below if you have any questions. Thanks.